Hey folks, welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. Today we're looking at Burson Audio's new Fun Amplifier. Um, now this comes in a range of theirs which has the, the Fun and the Bang, the Bang being a DAC, the Fun being an amplifier, and it's part of what they call their PC range. So it's designed specifically for those looking to use it for PC audio, but it's also a perfectly good standalone amplifier and DAC setup. What makes the Fun part of Burson Audio's PC range is the fact that you can plug a microphone into the front of it. So down here on the front panel, you've got a microphone input. And what that means you can do is you can use high quality audio based headphones for your video conferencing calls and plug in an external microphone that can then be fed directly through to your computer. So it's a really nice way of limiting the clutter and limiting the number of different devices that you need to have in order to enjoy both great sound quality, but also full featured internet communication. <laughs> Now, you might have noticed if you're familiar with the channel that I've got this little black thing looming over my head here today. That's my other camera that I'm gonna use shortly to take you on a tour through what makes the fun unique. But let me talk about it a bit first. One of the things that's really different about the fun is that Burson Audio actually encourage you to open it up. It's one of the first amplifiers I've ever reviewed or even owned that doesn't have a void if removed sticker on any of the screws. Not only that, but Burson Audio actually provides you with a hex key or an Allen key to open up the amplifier and get to the insides. And there's a reason for that. You see, the fun is entirely designed as an op amp swapper's dream. Now, what I mean by that, if you haven't watched some of my other reviews about Burson Audio op amps, is that you can take out the little chip called an op amp and change it over to tune the sound of the amplifier to your taste. And there are literally hundreds of different op amps available on the market. Burson Audio themselves make at least three, perhaps four, um, and then there's plenty of others available through general electronics suppliers. To give you an idea, I've got here the op amp from the Burson Audio Fun. Now it uses two of these in its standard form, um, and if you're having trouble seeing it, it's because yes, they actually are really tiny, and that's why I'm gonna take you on a tour with a different camera in just a moment. But the idea is that you can swap these stock op amps out and replace them with anything you like, including Burson Audio's own V6 range of op amps. As you can see from this, and these are in their protective casing, these are actually a lot bigger than what I just showed you. And the fun is designed to allow for that much space to fit these in. Um, these are available separately, but you can also buy them as a package with the fun and then just swap them out as you see fit and as you wish, depending on what you're listening to. I'll talk a little bit about the sound of these separately later, um, but for now, let's have a closer look at the fun itself. So you'll see here on the back of the fun, we've got on the left-hand side here, we've got RCA inputs. We've got the power supply input here, and that's for just a standard switch mode power supply. And that's the standard sort of power supply you'd see with a lot of electronic devices. So there's a plug in the wall socket that goes to a separate box and then a cable that feeds into the amplifier itself. We've got the, the mains power switch here. Um, I was really worried by the look of this that it was gonna be illuminated when it was on, um, but it's not. It looks like an illuminating switch, but it doesn't actually light up and shed any glow on the, on the room around it. Next to that, you've got your microphone output. So this is where the microphone can feed out of here and back into your computer if you're using it for gaming communications or um, video conferencing calls. And finally, and this is one of the things I love about the fun, it's also got RCA output. So this will work as a fully function preamp if you've got powered um, speakers, for instance, and you require something that's gonna give you that volume control. Um, and I really do enjoy it. It's actually operating as my main preamplifier in my desktop setup at the moment. If we switch to the front of the amplifier, what you'll see here is that on the front, we've got the large style headphone jack, We've also got a microphone input that I've already spoken about, so that feeds through here, out the back of the amplifier and into your computer. We've also got a line in, so if you wanna run an auxiliary source, for instance, you can run that through there. And obviously we've got the volume knob as well. Now I've already taken out the Allen head screws from the amplifier, um, but just for reference, there's a pair here at the back and a pair here at the front, um, and you only take off the top layer of screws. There's still, um, at each of the corners on the bottom layer, you leave those screws in, because the top cover actually comes off to reveal the inside of the amplifier. Now, once we're in here, there's very little you actually need to, to touch and, and play with. Um, so there's all the circuitry, obviously, you can see here. But in reality, the only things we're worried about are these two chips just here. And they're the standard JRC5534 op amps. Um, 
which are a good quality op amp. They're nothing spectacular, but they're okay. Easily enough, you can actually remove those, obviously with the power switched off. You can pull those out and replace them with whatever op amps you want. It's just a very simple eight pin DIN socket there. So just a little chip. So I'm gonna take out the op amps, the standard op amps that come with the Burson Fun. And I'm gonna place in Burson's own V6 Vivid op amps. Like so. Um, and now to give you a better view, if I pick up the amplifier and turn it sideways, you'll see they're quite large and they sit quite tall off the circuit board. But as I said, the amplifier is specifically designed to fit larger op amps. And so that gives you plenty of versatility to put basically anything you can think of into the body of the fun. Now, when I first got the fun and I started opening it up and playing with op amps, I suddenly thought, what's gonna happen if something goes wrong? For instance, when you're inserting op amps, there's a very specific way they need to go in and all op amps have some form of marking. In the case of Burson's own, there's a channel down one side and that channel tells you which way the op amp has to go into the socket. So it got me to thinking if Burson are encouraging us to open up their amplifiers and play around with the chips, what happens if you get it wrong? Now I was really pleased when Burson responded and said that essentially the amplifier is designed in such a way that the worst case scenario if you get the chips in the wrong way is you're gonna fry the chip itself. What that means is you've got to obviously spend to buy some new chips and there's no warranty cover for that. But the beauty of it is you don't have to worry about cooking the amplifier itself. So that's really good news and it's a great attitude that Burson are taking where they're gonna fully cover the circuitry of the fun, assuming you haven't messed with the individual components other than the op amps. It means that you're covered to really play and enjoy fiddling with the tuning of your amplifier and trying all different op amps. I've rolled through about five or six different op amps that I've I've got in my collection, and I have to say that all of them have worked perfectly. I haven't had a single pop or crackle or hiss. Um, the, the fun just seems to adapt beautifully to whatever the voltage and current requirements are for each op amp. So with all this talk about being able to tune the amplifier and change its sound and, and play with the op amps, let's talk a bit about the actual sound quality of the amp itself. Um, and I'll mention it in relation to a number of different chips, but specifically the overall tonality of the amplifier does actually come through a little bit. You can obviously tweak it with the chips that you put in there, but it's got its own starting point sound. When you first get the amplifier, as I said, it uses the JRC5534 chips. Um, these are just a basic, you know, run of the mill chip. I wouldn't say they're cheap, but they're also not particularly expensive. They're a few dollars each. The sound from these is good, um, it's clean, uh, it's not spectacular, it's not particularly transparent or particularly open sounding, um, but it's nice and it's, it's fairly neutral. What that means though is it allows the sound of the amplifier to come through and, and I noticed as soon as I put the fun on, it's got a fairly thick sound. It's quite a, um, I guess a lush sound, I would call it. Um, it's not too thick, it's not muddy, but it's certainly got a sense of weight behind it. Um, and so those looking for an analytical, clean, highly transparent amplifier aren't going to enjoy the fun in its stock form with the 5534 chips. The nice thing is, as we've already covered, you can always swap the chips out. But for those that do like a lot of transparency and um, openness in the sound, the stock fun is probably not for you. Now, let's just circle back for a second and I should mention that the stock fun costs about $299 US. So it's a very affordable amplifier in the scheme of things, particularly given its ability to take the microphone input, also to act as a fully functioning pre-amplifier and the fact that you can roll the chips in it. It's a really good offering. At the $300 mark, I don't think it's the best amplifier you can buy head to head for pure sound quality, but it's one of the, if not the only amplifier I'm aware of that allows itself to scale in the way that this one does. So let's talk a bit about what happens when you start swapping out the op amps. I've spent most of my time with the fun listening to Burson's own V6 classic op amp. Um, this was recommended to me by the guys at Burson because they had read some of my reviews and seen my videos and knew the taste that I have in music. And that is that I tend to like a warmer, richer sound within reason. Um, and these have been a great recommendation. I really enjoy the V6 classic. Um, I think it's a very um, engaging and enjoyable op amp. Um, it's definitely got a sense of that analog sound, if you like, a lot of engagement and rhythm to it. Um, but it's not the last word in transparency by any stretch, nor is it meant to be. And what I found was that when I added the classic 
to the fun, what it really did was it took the stock sound of the fun, that, that sort of fairly warm, engaging sound that I mentioned before, and it just enhanced it. It didn't change the sound signature of the amplifier. It just improved every aspect of it. So it became more detailed. There was greater sense of openness and transparency, but not a change in the sound signature. It's not a change in the sound signature itself. So the sound signature is still quite warm, really good bass, a good sense of rhythm and drive, um, but it wasn't suddenly turning it into some kind of super neutral rule of flat presentation. Um, the emphasis is definitely still on the mid range and the bass. By only a little bit, but it's, it's definitely emphasized and colored slightly. Um, and I found it really enjoyable, particularly if you were using headphones that are more on the neutral or analytical side, let's say HD800s for instance, this would be a really nice way of just bringing that bit of extra engagement, warmth and soul to headphones that are a bit more analytical. With something like my AudioQuest Nighthawks, I'd say that it's not quite too much of a good thing, but I don't need the sound of the, um, the V6 Classic so much. Um, it's definitely an upgrade over the stock sound from the fun with the 5534s, um, but it's, it's still on the same path, which for me with the Nighthawks is questionable whether I need that or not. Alternatively, Burson were also kind enough to provide me with the V6 Vivid. Now the V6 Vivid, as the name might suggest, is an op amp that starts to provide a bit more clarity, a bit more openness to the sound. Um, and I haven't done a full review on these yet, but I'm really liking what I'm hearing. They take the fun sound signature, which is warm and rich and engaging, and they just open it up a little bit. Um, it's not gonna turn it into a completely different amp, but it gives you that ability just to stretch a little bit of the detail into the top end. Um, it pulls back on the bass a tiny little bit and just makes everything a little bit more neutral, a little bit more analytical. Um, actually, analytical is probably going too far, but a little bit more transparent and neutral, I think is the best way to describe it. I'm gonna produce a full review of the Vivid and the Classic op amps. So do keep an eye out for that one. If you haven't already, do subscribe to the channel if you're interested. Um, because I'll be presenting that soon just to give you a full picture. Now I mentioned before that the um, stock version of the fun with the 5534 chips is about 299 US dollars. Um, with the kit that comes with two of either the Vivid or the Classic op amps, you're looking at 399 US dollars from Burson Direct um, to buy the fun and it will come in a package with the 5534s installed but a set of these separately in the packaging for you. And that's kind of fun because you can hear the stock version before you do the upgrade and really hear what you're getting for the extra $100. I highly recommend this amplifier for people who are looking for something that they can roll op amps with. If you wanna buy something that's set and forget, I probably wouldn't think about this in its stock $300 form. So if you're not someone that's comfortable buying other op amps or perhaps spending the initial $100 up front to get person's own op amps in the package, I don't think this is a worthwhile investment for $299. There's other amps out there that I think are probably on par or better for the same money. However, if you're somebody that is willing to try some different op amps and even better if you're someone that's gonna enjoy that, or if you're happy to spend the extra $100 up front and choose either the Vivid or the Classic, I think this is a fantastic offering, particularly if you're somebody that's also looking for a preamp. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button and uh, do subscribe to the channel. I've got plenty of great reviews coming, including an exciting new release from MathDrop Audio. As always, thanks for watching, happy listening, and we'll see you next time here on Passion for Sound. Mm -hmm.